Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining today. So like Mike said, the, the title of this talk is Iceberg Havasu, a Spatial Data Lakehouse Format. Uh, so in this talk, we're going to be talking about working with geospatial data in Apache Iceberg. So my name is Will. I work for a company called Whereabots on the developer relations team. Uh, you can find some of my, my contact info there on the screen. Feel free to reach out. Always happy to, to chat with folks. Uh, you can grab the slides uh, at bit.ly slash subsurface dash Havasu or scan that QR code. I'll have the, the link again at the end uh, if you miss it here. So Whereabots was founded by the original creators of the open source Apache Sedona project. If you're not familiar with Apache Sedona, it's a project that extends the functionality of distributed compute frameworks uh, like Apache Spark or Flink uh, or Snowflake to add geospatial functionality. So adding uh, geospatial types and optimizations for really large scale uh, geospatial data processing. And at Whereabots, we're building the spatial analytics and AI cloud on top of Apache Sedona. Uh, so managing the cluster for you and adding a more cloud native features to give you a more cloud native develop experience for working with large scale spatial data. And one of those like cloud native developer experiences that we really wanted uh, in Whereabouts Cloud was this DBMS like, this relational database like experience for working with large scale geospatial analytics. So having familiar SQL tables, familiar, familiar SQL syntax, um, but really underlying that, having this massive data lake of spatial data in uh, Parquet files. So this really was the, the driver for the need for a spatial data lakehouse table format, uh, which gets us to Havasu. Uh, Havasu is an extension of Apache Iceberg, so this is an open table format that adds support for working uh, with large scale spatial data to Iceberg. So for the rest of the talk here, I guess I'd like to you know, first do a little bit of motivation here to, to talk about you know, why are we interested in geospatial for Iceberg. Then we'll talk about some of the features in Havasu. And then at the end, we'll have a demo to, to see this in action. So first of all, what is geospatial analytics? Well, rather than, than give you like a, an exact definition, I think it's helpful to see some of the industries, some of the use cases, some of the data sources that are involved, uh, and especially think about the, like the scale of the data involved here. So for example, in the real estate industry, uh, a common use case is something like site selection, uh, identifying investment opportunities, um, managing infrastructure, planning and the data sources might be parcel data, building footprint data, maybe derived from satellite imagery, mobility data. In the risk analysis world, this could be things like um, disaster modeling, pricing uh, risk, pricing insurance products, assessing geopolitical risks. So the data sources might be things like flood models, uh, weather patterns, satellite imagery that we apply, uh, maybe object detection, machine learning to. Uh, in ecology, things like migration patterns, species interactions, uh, the impacts of infrastructure. In the telecom industry, these are going to be things like cell tower analysis. Where should I place my next cell tower? Um, do I have good quality uh, of service for my current customers, depending on analyzing call detail records, mobility data? Um, elevation models are also important here if I need line of sight for things like uh, microwave signals, these sorts of things, transportation and logistics, um, things like uh, traffic changes into account, efficient routing, using road network data, telemetry, satellite imagery. So these are some examples, um, but really when we're talking about geospatial analytics, really talking about uh, making sense of working with data that has some spatial component. This blog post, uh, the periodic table of spatial analysis, I thought it was pretty helpful to give a like a broad overview um, of some of the like functionality involved in spatial analytics. So that's something to uh, something to check out if you want to see kind of some of the techniques involved. 
Now, there's some common challenges that come up when we're working with large scale geospatial data. Uh, and there, there's this saying that spatial is special, which kind of implies that due to the specialized nature of the data, the, the specialized knowledge and experience, um, that working with spatial data requires specialized tooling. Uh, and you know, some of the challenges that come up are things like the data representation format. So uh, in the geospatial world, there's vector data and raster data. And we'll talk about what those are in a minute. Um, but these are different ways of representing spatial data. Uh, we have different coordinate systems in the spatial world. So these are different ways of mapping a point on the surface of the earth uh, using different units of measure. Uh, we have projected coordinate systems, which you know map a uh, curved surface of the earth to a 2D representation. There's some distortion involved. You need to be able to uh, translate data back and forth from coordinate systems uh, if we're working with multiple uh, data types. So Point line polygon, these are the, the basic vector geometry types, but these can actually be quite complicated. Um, if we think of a very complex, very large polygon, that can actually be a, a huge data structure that might just represent one attribute in one row in our data. Uh, the indexing structures that we use, because spatial data is by nature multidimensional, the indexing structures we use to work with spatial data can be a bit different from uh, other data systems that we're familiar with. And in a distributed system, spatial partitioning uh, plays a really important role, making sure we're efficiently distributing data throughout our cluster. So Apache Sedona was created to address many of these challenges. Um, we said Apache Sedona is an open source project that adds um, spatial types, optimizations for spatial queries, spatial processing functionality uh, to distributed compute frameworks like Apache Spark. Now, Spatial SQL, this is one of the most common ways uh, with uh, Apache Sedona and Whereabots and, and other geospatial tools that we interact with spatial data. This is based on uh, a standard from uh, OGC, the Open uh, Geospatial Council. Uh, this is the OGC uh, uh, SQL access standard uh, that defines these ST underscore functions. So things like being able to construct a geospatial type, uh, predicates that we might use in a join clause, um, aggregations, also working uh, with raster data uh, as well. Let's take a look at some examples of the, the kinds of spatial queries that Apache Sedona introduces optimizations for. And if you think about how these uh, execute on a very, very large scale data, think about the kinds of indexing uh, the kind of optimizations that we want to have available. So this first one is a spatial range query. So in this example, we're searching for point geometries that fall within a polygon. I just kind of drew a polygon roughly approximating the Gulf of Mexico. And in our SQL statement, select from where? So we're selecting uh, the location of these structures from our offshore infrastructure table, where ST within, so where the geometry uh, of these offshore infrastructure points are within this polygon. Another spatial query is the spatial join query, where we have two tables, in this case, a table of uh, airports, so point geometries, and country boundaries, so polygons. And we want to join these tables where the geometry of the airport is within the geometry of the country. Then we might do an aggregation, a, a group by you maybe a count of the number of airports within each country. Spatial KNN, K nearest neighbors, neighbors query based on distance. So here we're searching for uh, points of interest in a specific category that are closest to uh, some point near San Francisco. So we want to be able to efficiently uh, access data in this case that is uh, within close spatial proximity. Again, think of like the, the distributed indexing and, and partitioning functionality that is needed for executing this query on a very, very large data set. Uh, raster data, which we've mentioned a few times, if you're not familiar with raster data, raster data, these are things like uh, satellite imagery, or this could be something like population estimates. Um, but basically, we're working with 
gridded data that each cell has a value, one or more values. If we're talking about satellite imagery, we could have maybe a three or four band raster that has a uh, visible spectrum, like our red, green, blue um, values for the bands. And if we're working with large raster data, we'll typically tile those. So each tile of the raster of the image in this case represents one row in the table. Then to query that, um, oftentimes we want to work with individual cell values within the raster. So here we're taking uh, two rasters, the average Earth surface temperature over two years, subtracting the difference using the map algebra uh, spatial SQL function to give us the distance. So where was the Earth warmer? Where was it colder uh, from one year to the other? So this brings us back to Havasu and this architecture that we want to offer as you know, developer experience for users where we have multiple applications that are querying a single uh, Havasu iceberg table using spatial SQL at the same time, supporting concurrent operations. Underneath that, we have this data lake of partitioned parquet or partitioned geo parquet files. So there are two interesting things to, to note here. One is the uh, geo parquet aspect. Uh, which we'll talk about in a second, and then uh, the Havasu table format. So let's dig into Havasu and we'll talk a bit about uh, the features there and, and what that looks like. So Havasu is an extension of Apache Iceberg. I, I know a lot of you are familiar with Iceberg. If you're not, Iceberg is this open table format with the goal of introducing you know, reliable, simple SQL tables on top of huge analytic data sets. So we can you know, think about the table as the abstraction, not think about how are we going to partition uh, our, our parquet files, these sorts of things. And it allows us to bring compute to the data by having you know, multiple query engines accessing, uh, accessing our tables. So Havasu is this open source extension of Iceberg that adds support for uh, spatial geometry and raster data types and also takes into account the spatial column metadata, um, which is really important for ensuring uh, efficient spatial queries. Uh, and then we can encode that in parquet files, uh, optionally as GeoParquet to ensure um, compatibility with the ecosystem there. So what are, what are the benefits? Well, well the, one bit, the main benefit uh, is that we have this you know, spatial DBMS-like experience. We have uh, tables as the abstraction that uh, you know we can send spatial SQL to query these tables. Um, that's the developer experience that we're shooting for. But then we have performance benefits because we're enforcing spatial integrity at, at right time of these tables. We don't have to parse and transform spatial data at the application level. And because we're taking into account spatial metadata, the spatial filtering and queries can be optimized uh, to add things like spatial filter pushdown. And then of course we have all the benefits of Apache Iceberg uh, as well. That's the Havasu layer. Um, let's talk a bit about this GeoParquet data lake layer at the bottom there. So GeoParquet, if you're not familiar, is a specification for working with geospatial data in Apache Parquet. So really the goal here is to um, you know, introduce the, all the benefits of Parquet, which is namely um, uh, efficient storage and efficient retrieval, uh, but now also for spatial data. And this is a community effort that there's been a few years in the works here. I think the 1.0 release uh, came out in October of last year. It's just about to the 1.1 release now. Uh, Parquet, if you're not familiar, like I said, is this column-oriented data store that gives us very efficient data storage and data retrieval. Um, I'm gonna skip over these slides to make sure we have time uh, for the demo here, but this goes into a bit of detail of how Parquet works. Uh, one important aspect is this idea of metadata for uh, chunks or row groups. And so Parquet keeps track of the statistics for the minimum and maximum values within a chunk or within a row group that readers at query time can use to, to prune or exclude chunks to not have to read, uh, which allows for very efficient queries. 
So GeoParquet specifies how geometries uh, should be should be serialized um, as as binary, uh, and then the benefits of Parquet uh, then apply to those for efficient um, efficient storage. So I mentioned the the one point one version of GeoParquet is coming uh, very soon. This adds support for GeoArrow encoding uh, and also taking into account row level bounding box column, which enables uh, this pruning at the uh, row group level. So let's talk about uh, Havasu a bit more. Um, we said that Havasu adds support for vector spatial attributes. Vector spatial attributes, these are points, lines, polygons, and their associated attributes. So for the geometry values, we have the, the shape of the geometry and the associated um, SRID, the, the spatial reference, the, the coordinate system, essentially. And we can encode these in, in Parquet using a variety of formats, optionally GeoParquet, uh, which we just reviewed. Now, raster data, so we said raster data is gridded data where we have cells, each cell maps to some area on the surface of the earth and has uh, one or more values in bands. And there are two ways to persist raster data in Iceberg uh, Havasu. One is in DB to store the actual band values um, alongside the georeference data in the actual data files, or out DB, which stores the geo metadata in uh, Havasu, but just holds a reference to something like cloud object storage. Typically, these are uh, cloud optimized geotiffs. Uh, and this allows us to take advantage of um, uh, cloud object storage and uh, can be much more efficient for uh, working with large scale raster data. So by taking into account the spatial metadata, uh, if we go back to that example of the spatial range query where we're filtering for points within a polygon, uh, we can exclude uh, certain data files based on the query window. This is spatial filter pushdown. In order to enable this, uh, we need to create an index. Uh, so Havasu supports the create spatial index uh, functionality that uses a Hilbert space filling curve. This is really shorthand for Iceberg's rewrite data files to essentially sort our uh, rows according to spatial proximity. In Whereabouts Cloud, uh, we also use the Iceberg catalog feature uh, to expose this uh, table database abstraction to the user. So we implement uh, an Iceberg catalog. This is a screenshot uh, from Whereabouts Cloud, just showing some databases and tables that I have in my account. And we also use this for the Whereabouts Open Data Catalog, which are curated spatial data sets that we make available uh, to each Whereabouts Cloud user. Been some exciting developments uh, recently on the aspect of contributing some of these features back to Apache Iceberg. Um, so there's in collaboration with the, the community and, and some folks at Apple and other organizations, there's now a proposal uh, on GitHub to add geospatial support to Iceberg. Um, so if you're interested in that, you can check out the GitHub issue linked there. Okay, so let's see this in action. I'm gonna switch over to uh, this notebook that I have running in uh, Whereabouts Cloud. Um, and so I've loaded some data from Bird Buddy. So I have a data frame here that has uh, observations of bird species and you know when and when and where they were observed. And what I'm going to do now is create a Havasu table uh, with this data. Um, so first of all, we can you know, look at the catalog. So catalog is kind of the top level namespace. By default, we use the uh, whereabouts namespace. So here I'm creating a uh, Havasu table, whereabouts bird buddy observations. Uh, so whereabouts is the catalog, bird buddy is the database or namespace, observation is the table. Uh, we can look at all of the, the databases that I have in uh, this catalog, and we can look at the tables um, within the bird buddy namespace, which is just the observations. Uh, and we can describe the table, and we can insert values. So here I'm going to insert uh, one observation. I found uh, a purple finch, and then we can query that using SQL. We can visualize it using uh, Kepler. So this is the 
Kepler integration for, uh, for Sedona. You can see our one lonely observation. Let's write the data frame uh, that we had above to our Obsbird buddy observations table. Uh, I think this is maybe something like 25 million observations. Uh, and then we can create a spatial index. So we create an index on the location property. And again, this is kind of syntactic sugar for icebergs uh, rewrite data files, which is now going to uh, rewrite the parquet files, the partitioned parquet files, uh, sorting them by spatial proximity. And by the way, we can see these in uh, the Whereabots UI. So this is the, the Whereabots Cloud UI and my Whereabots catalog. If I take a look at the underlying files for the observation table, first of all, we can see the data files. These are partitioned uh, parquet files. We can see the metadata files uh, stored there as well. And so now we can apply some spatial queries to this table. So we can search for observations that intersect uh, some buffer around a point in New York, and we can visualize these. So here are all of the uh, observations in this table that we found uh, within a certain radius of uh, this point in Manhattan. Um, we can also work with raster data. So in this example, we are going to load a raster image. So this is a, a data set from NASA of nighttime visible light, which is a really interesting data set that can be used to derive some economic indicators as well. So if we are observing uh, nighttime lights, that's an indicator that there's some amount of industrial activity. Um, so we're going to use this RS from path function to load an outDB raster from, uh, from an S3 bucket. This is a, a GeoTIFF. And then typically, if we have uh, rasters that cover the entire um, Earth, we will tile those. So we're tiling these now into 256 by 256 uh, tiles. And now we can write that to a Havasu table. And so it's quite small. We have only you know, 11,000 uh, rows in this table. Gives you a sense of uh, what that looks like. And if we zoom out here in the visualization, we can see how these are tiled uh, across the, the surface of the Earth. We can do things like find the tile that intersects a certain point and then extract the value uh, at that point. So at this point, the value is 63, which means that um, there's some measure of uh, nighttime light there. Another operation we can do is zonal statistics. So here we're going to load uh, a county's shapefile. So these are boundaries of all US counties. And then we're going to use this RS zonal stats. So zonal statistics is basically taking some vector geometry, some boundary, identifying all the raster cells within that boundary, and then either doing a count of the bound values, or in this case, we're taking the average to get a sense of the average light exposure within each county, uh, which we can then visualize. And you can see this, this maps largely to population density, although there's maybe some interesting outliers of perhaps industrial activity, um, things like perhaps nighttime uh, oil operations or, or things like that. But it gives a sense of what are the, the counties with the most light uh, exposure at night. Cool, well, that was a quick demo. Um, the code is linked there if you'd like to check it out. If you'd like to get started uh, with Havasu today, you can uh, sign up for a free Whereabots Cloud account, uh, which gives you all access to all the functionality we looked at today. Um, there's also this slide, which has some uh, good resources for getting started uh, as well. And I'll just end here on this slide so you can grab uh, the, the link to the slides, uh, scan that QR code, and then you can go through and find any of the links uh, that you're looking for.